Thank you, Jimmy. Wow, what an end to the first day of CoinGeek Conference New York. If you want to come out, you can still check us out at CoinGeekConference.com. Come see what's going on for day two. But holy cow, what an end to day one with basically everyone who invented everything in the blockchain space. I'm joined here uh, with Shashank Singhal. And uh, gosh, what, what is there to even say about uh, a panel of, of such magnitude? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I was pretty awestruck even just watching it, right? Listening to the stories of, of them talking about, you know, the, the OG days back in the 90s when they were actually developing and ideating this stuff. I can't even imagine the, yeah. the things they must have faced. Well, yeah. And the amount of respect in the room yeah. is, is really what stands out, yeah. uh, at least to me. Yeah, uh, but couldn't hear a pin drop, honestly, in that room while <laughs> <laughs> they were talking. <laughs> Speaking of respect, you are yourself a hackathon winner. Uh, in 2019, your, your company, Coda, won the hackathon. Um, can you walk us through, I mean, going back, this is about two years ago now. Yeah. What, what's it been like, first of all, maybe tell us a little bit about Coda, and then what's it been like working the, the last two years uh, since then? Well, of course, Coda's uh, an API marketplace, which essentially uh, allows software developers to exchange code and pay each other per call in BSV microtransactions to use. Uh, so, it was, yeah, it was obviously really exciting winning the hackathon back in Seoul. It was good, and since then, we were basically validated the product, made sure that we were building in the right direction. Uh, we're constantly always talking to users, you know, trying to build on the best route. Uh, and since then, yeah, we've been developing things. And earlier today, I talked about a lot of the new things we're releasing and working on, uh, and which we're really excited about, new ways to approach microtransactions, uh, new service offerings along the same outlook. Uh, and it's been busy, uh, especially, you know, in COVID, working from home and everything. Yeah. But it's been, it's been good. It's been very productive. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what, what comes next. I think there were two directions to go when, when COVID-19 sort of changed the way we all live our lives. And yeah. I saw some exciting projects sort of go away. Mm. And then some people seem to really hunker down and put out some cool stuff. What, what was the process for you guys? Mm. And, and how did you end up getting to where you are now? Well, obviously, yeah, like you mentioned with COVID, it's a push and a pull, right? Sometimes it, it distracts you, but other times you, you're you like, okay, well, I'm at home and I've got nothing better to do, so let's just crack down and let's deliver some products. So that's what, that's what we did. Uh, and we managed to get a full product release out, a bunch of licenses with, with uh, regulatory authorities uh, and, and built a lot of new cool shit. So. Sure. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, you'd think it'd be a dream for a developer. Like, wow, I don't have to go outside for months <laughs> yeah. at a time. Huh? So <laughs> I think... Um, so looking back at today, there were a lot of really exciting presentations. Mm. Uh, for me personally, I really liked the gaming panel. It was four different guys and all their companies and how they're working together. But what stood out to you? What was, uh, what was your number one and maybe number two uh, presentations from today? Well, I was really excited, of obviously, being a hackathon winner myself. I was really excited to watch the hackathon finalists. So that was, uh, that was to me, the coolest thing. And so that's what I stuck around for uh, and watched those through. Uh, and it was really cool, really great ideas to come out of that, yeah. uh, which was super interesting. Uh, obviously, in, in that final panel, uh, for the amount of time I was in the room earlier on, was really, really exciting to see. You know, yeah. I always wanted to hear the stories you know, told about how it all started and how they all worked together. And it was yeah, pretty fantastic. absolutely. So going to the hackathon specifically, um, first of all, um, I saw the, the Japanese fellow whose name escapes me, and I apologize, but uh, I saw him walking up the hallway in a kimono, and I said, so, okay, you know, what's, what's this going to be? And I just thought it was brilliant watching him give a presentation in English that he obviously had, had really struggled with. Yeah. And then the, the translation of it, but, but pitching the idea with an incredible amount of uh, confidence mm. stood out to me. But mm. um, what, what stood out to you? What, what do you think was the best presentation of the hackathon? If you had to vote, if you were the judge, what would it be and why? Well, yeah, as you said, I thought it was super admirable the way that way he approached um, presenting despite not knowing the language too well. Uh, and, and I think he did a really, really great job given the circumstances. Uh, and his idea was also really interesting and I thought potentially really powerful. Uh, the other ones were Catnate and Bitcoin Phone. Mm -hmm. My personal favorite was the Bitcoin Phone. Uh, one of the reasons was technically speaking, it uses N sequence in a way that no one has really accomplished to do successfully uh, on the mm -hmm. Bitcoin network so far. Uh, and I thought that was really cool to see, but it wasn't just an interesting technical solution like we've seen in past hackathon finals. He also yeah. had a real use case. He had uh, revenue generation ideas built in, ready to go. Uh, so yeah, that would be my vote. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I was on a panel and it was about Bitcoin mm. in business and, and bridging these things using BSV instead of some other blockchain, mm. getting away from the, hey, I've got a really cool development idea and turning it into, here's my business. And it really struck me too that Bitcoin phone stood out as the one that has 
a business plan. Yeah, exactly. How do we get more people to go that direction with their, <laughs> and you know, I get it. Devs want to sit and yeah. dev, yeah. but how do we get to business on Bitcoin in, in your opinion? It's tough, man. Yeah, because like you said, devs want to dev. And right now, Bitcoin is a very dev-focused community, right? Because early stage, complicated technology, that's just, that's just how it goes. I think it's just about education, right? People ask me this question all the time. Like, what do you, how do you create the best hackathon entry? And it's always build the best business. Find a way to generate revenue. Make money, get users. That is how you build the best hackathon business or business in general, even. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, you just got to exp explain that to people. You got to be willing to listen to them, work ideas with them. Uh, and hopefully that results in amazing stuff. Like like we saw earlier today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and it really stands out uh, looking back at past hackathon winners or, or thinking about some of these things, like Bitping, I think, was the, the first one, yes. uh, another Australian company. Yes. And uh, they had a business model, and they still exist today. They are a thriving business mm, today. Exactly. Or we think back to the last time we were in New York about a year ago, mm. and it was the Kurt brand. Mm. And they took second place, which was surprising to me, but... They've got a bunch of transactions on chain and they're making big announcements tomorrow. So it, it, it seems to me that when they lead with the business hmm. use case, what are we disrupting? Hmm. That stands out. How, can we teach that to people? Or is there a difference between the business dev and the software dev that can't be bridged? I think it can always be bridged, but there are definitely software devs where, where it's harder to build that bridge. <laughs> right? where you, where you, sure. re, yeah, you really have to work hard to explain to them. Like I said, Bitping did a great job where they had a, they were all very deeply technical people, but they still managed to do a really good job uh, developing a business idea and focusing on the idea and then building the technicals around it. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, yeah, as you said, there are other companies where they build the technicals first. Like, this is super interesting, super cool. And then later on, maybe they'll try to sort of tinker in a business idea into sure. the technical solution, which is just the wrong order. Yeah. So I think it's just the way you, the order in which you think about things has to change. Uh, and software sure. developers sometimes have trouble thinking business first, tech second. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So getting to the conference itself, I mean, there's, there's the presentations, mm. there's the, the show. Mm. But then there's also the relationships, right? There's yeah. the people you get to talk with in a hallway that, yeah. oh, hey, I see you on Twitter or wherever. Mm. Did you have any interesting conversations with people backstage or anything that uh, maybe you were surprised? Certainly. I mean, like, yeah, when you walk around these conferences, you know, you get pulled up everywhere you go to, to have a chat with someone. Um, I had some, a really interesting chat earlier uh, with someone who was brand new to BSB. You know, he was right here. He was just asking questions. How does this actually work? You know, and it was, it was almost fun. I didn't expect to, to, to have these conversations with people at this conference. Uh, but that was super interesting. I also met uh, a man who was developing some really interesting smart contract solutions for uh, he had an idea where everyone should have a smart contract uh, and then they can build sort of their own uh, brand through the smart contract and again some super interesting stuff going around and you don't hear about the vast majority of the interesting developments and improvements that people are building on the bsv ecosystem yeah absolutely mm. which brings me back to coda uh you had some announcements about your business would you like to share with the audience uh in 20 or 30 seconds what uh what were the big things about coda that you were talking about today on stage if they missed it yeah of course so coda basically uh released our public marketplace about two months ago. And since then, we've, we're also launching a microtransaction USD token, which actually allows non-BSV users to uh, use BSV without even seeing it or knowing that it's powering everything under the hood. Uh, and beyond that, we're, we're expanding our payment gateway to encompass several other technologies moving forward. So this will include data storage, uh, pay per hour per, per kilobyte, uh, compute to rent compute functions, and uh, also uh, IoT to Internet of Things and, sure. and microservice encompassing. And it all ties back to the same payment gateway that we use in our API. Brilliant. Which is really cool. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, the, the stablecoin concept? Is this similar to like a MakerDAO die thing? Or how does that work? So it's essentially just, uh, to begin with at least, it would just be on our platform. Uh, and it's essentially each token will be worth uh, one hundredth of a cent. Uh, and we'll be just delivering that and using that to exchange on our platform rather than actual tokens or actual money. Uh, and the reason for that is because, yeah, as I mentioned, BS non-BSV users have trouble using BSV, but they can use microtransactions and use BSV as a payment processing network sure. without actually knowing about it. Brilliant. I love it. So did you go to the party last night, the cocktail party? I did. I did. It was a, it was a heck of a party. <laughs> there, were, there were some wild tweets, and yeah. there's been a little bit of blowback. In fact, I, I saw Gregory Maxwell posting and Reddit about it today. So what do you think... Um, 
what, what was the, have, have you looked at Twitter and seen any of the crazy uh, going on there? I haven't had much time to look at Twitter in the last 24 hours, honestly. Um, some of us have real building to do, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, um, I certainly every now and then look at some crazy stuff that's happening. And I think you have something in front of you, maybe uh, I got, explain to me some of the tweets. I got, I got a little bit. Well, so we had Adrian Grenier come out. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine he's on screen. Can I get a thumbs up from the crew if, if we got beautiful? We had Adrian Grenier come out, uh, UN representative for climate change, and mm. uh, talking about NFT technology. Yep. He auctioned off, or he's currently still auctioning off a piece mm. of artwork. Yep. Uh, Calvin, yeah. Calvin posted about it. We had uh, Emily Radijowski, mm. uh, who also uh, used the NFT technology to um, <clears throat> secure her digital image rights, mm. which cool. is uh, you know a, a unique thing over here. Mm. Um, then we also have Times Square, which one of the big criticisms you hear mm. on a, on a semi-regular basis. Mm. Uh, I'm going to have to let you go, Shashank. <laughs> it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Uh, we'll keep looking at the tweets as we, uh, as we make the change. Thank pleasure you, sir. speaking with you. Absolutely. Uh, we market it in Times Square, so you can see on the NASDAQ building uh, some, of the, some of the cool stuff we're up to. We had the announcements uh, from my favorite presentation here uh, from Alex and Goot. Uh, dropping the PG-13s going on here <laughs> across Twitter as well. And, uh, of course, my dear friend John Southhurst from CoinGeek making fun of how big I look on stage, even when I'm the smallest guy on stage. So thank you, John. I do not owe you a beer next time I see you. And we are joined by the delightful... <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul Ratchgod from uh, Air Ventures. How you doing, sir? Great, great. Good evening. Good evening. You were on the panel today talking or, mm. or listening to the hackathon items. And I have to ask, first of all, what do you look for in a hackathon contestant before they get there? What, what is that process like yeah. before the event? It's, I mean, m my approach to this is a little bit different, of course, than, uh, than a, a Steve and a Dr. Wright because, you know, my background isn't technical to say the least and certainly not Bitcoin technology so I'm always looking for what's the business angle um, and I, I said this um, in in our discussion on the panel that I know that's a hard thing to do because you're charged with as a hackathon ent entrant you're charged with here's the problem well so to speak we want you to build a solution that involves peer-to-peer -peer. go build one well they don't know if the customers are going to be there they don't know what end market they're going to have um, they don't know what kind of demand they're going to have so that, that side's really tricky but but that's the part that I look for, and I know um, there are a lot of questions from Donnie along, along that front as well, like, have you thought about that part? And I get that it's hard. I get that it's hard, but that's, of course, what any investor is going to ask, well, do you know if there's customers for this? And if the answer is, I don't um, at all, in a sense, that's understandable, sure. but it's something that we have to work through. We try to figure out, okay, well, you know, where do, where do we think this can go, and, and, you know, what kind of value is that? Yeah, for sure. So how do we arrive at the three that we saw on stage today? Um, well, frankly, we relied a lot on, on, on Steve's team for that, sure. to be honest with you. I wasn't involved with the process beforehand. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin phone stood out to me. It stood out to Shashank, who was here before you. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? Can you reveal where your vote went uh, yet, or when do yeah, we get to hear that? I cannot, but um, uh, what, I'll, what I'll try to say is this, um, going back to my comment a second ago, that, you know, where is the end market for this? And at first I struggled with, with the Bitcoin uh, phone one, because mm -hmm. I've seen it out there on Twitter for a while. I know some pe people posted it, and I listened to the call, and I, I, I got the concept, and I thought, well, where can this go? I don't really get it. I don't really get how there can be an sure. end market for this. Um, but when you think about um, what did stand out about that one for me is we always talk about how Bitcoin can help solve problems for, you know, third world economies and, and, and places like that. And when you think of the example he gave of, imagine someone, uh, someone who's Haitian giving French lessons, you know, and then I thought, well, that can be, that can, that can blow wide open. Mm -hmm. If you can um, market it properly, build it properly, et cetera, that stood out to me. Was, okay, that, that's an interesting marketplace, I think. Yeah, it is. Somebody pointed out uh, the other day that Skype's been around for 15 years, mm -hmm. and we don't Skype each other. Everybody Zooms. So somehow, Except me and my parents. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But, you yeah. know, Zoom, Zoom showed up and, and disrupted a bunch of things with just yeah. good branding, and, but mm -hmm. it's the same idea. And I, I think with this, with Bitcoin Phone, in my opinion anyways, if it's just that good of a product and they disrupt something, it, it can just mm -hmm. sway, basically. Yep. 
What, what did you think of the other presentations? I'd love to hear just a high-level thought uh, on, on the other two. Hackathon? The hackathon items, yeah, yeah please. Um, sim similar questions and similar sort of Q&A going on in my head is where can this go? Uh, what I found interesting about uh, the Japanese one, I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. Uh, <laughs> TKS Point maybe is right? I might be right. Might be right. Um, what surprised me about that was it looks like some, a product that's like already in beta. Mm -hmm. Like, clearly I didn't understand, I don't speak Japanese, so I didn't understand yeah. what was in the app, but it looked like this is pretty far along. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that, that was interesting. So it was more than just a concept. This is like, I could see that being used already today, or assuming that it's ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So this is day one. We've been going hard today. Uh, yeah. if, if you showed up last night for the cocktail party, you've been going hard for uh, a good while now. And we got two more days. Mm -hmm. So what are you excited for day two, day three? Is there, is there a big reveal you're looking for? I guess you can't blow, uh, the, blow the lid off. But. You know, sometimes, you and I have spoken about this in the past, sometimes I know things and sometimes I don't. And the things that I know I think are going to be exciting and interesting for people with some of our investments, like, uh, like Buzzcast that we kind of announced today. Um, we had their logo in our presentation. I know they're presenting on a panel, um, I think, tomorrow. But, um, um, you know, one of the things I always like to get out of this is I, I actually try to, uh, it's kind of, kind of counterintuitive, but I try to not have meetings with people that come by our booth, you know, because sure. I don't want to do that. What I, what I try to do is catch up with the companies we've invested in, mm -hmm. most of which are presenting here, or a lot of which are presenting here, and see what's new and exciting, catch up with them, and then try to catch presentations from companies I don't know. Sure. And so I actually try to be like, you know what, back to Zoom. Let's chat next week when I'm back in Antigua. We don't have to do this right now. I want to go see that company, that company, that. And of course, I got to see Dr. Wright. Yeah. Um, and I actually missed some of that. I, I did too. I had to get ready for this, Kurt. I, I did the same thing. I, I had to leave. It was the presentation <laughs> I've been looking forward to for yeah. two weeks. And I had to miss the second half for some okay. check. <laughs> well, and I missed the first half. So we, together, we've seen the whole thing. Perfect. Holy crap. That's yeah. all I'll say. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's amazing. So. Walking around the hallways and bumping mm. into people. I mean, people generally know who you are. I, I think some people see you as, hey, if I yeah. get in good with Paul, <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a good spot here. You know, like, we can, we can get an air investment or something. And what, what's it like uh, being a venture capitalist in a space where there's a little bit of friction about being a venture capitalist in sure. the first place? But sure. how, do you, how do you navigate that? Well, you know, the, the, hard, the hardest part um, is people need to recognize and understand that, you know, this is not a hard and fast number, but typically most venture capitalists, most investors, probably VCs or just high net worth people, maybe like yourself, I don't know if people come up to you and say, hey, will you invest, you know, whatever. But, you know, you, you reject most of them because you get so much uh, deal flow, so much input, you obviously cannot accept most of them. And the kind of unwritten rules, so to speak, in the VC community is you reject 90 plus percent. Hmm. You don't look to do that on purpose. It's just that's kind of one of those things about kind of the way the math works out. So, um, and then... Like, you know, Air Ventures, like a lot of groups, we've got an investment committee. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, may, I may be your first point of contact. And, yes, of course, there's Calvin, and everyone knows Calvin, and you can reach him, and he responds, and so on. But we've got an investment committee, and we need their approval. They're very sophisticated finance types that, you know, have their own way of looking at things. And, you know, all together, we reject most of what, of what we see for now. Yeah. That's the other thing that I remind people. You know, it might be that something is too early for us, and I understand that we might miss it. And maybe when, when we think they're ready, they don't think we're the right fit anymore. And that, that could happen. But often we don't tell people go away. We tell them, I don't think now is the right time for us. We prefer to see investments that have X, Y, and Z. And we don't think you have that yet. You know, you've got, I don't know, through W. <laughs> and so we're going to sit this one out. And we're going to wait um, and see how you develop. And we're going to be cheering you on. And we'll introduce you to our you know, other VC friends who maybe are ready to do this now. Right. And that's the whole co-opetition thing that you know, is quite like, I think, other capital markets outside of, uh, of crypto. God, I hate that. <laughs> but it's true, like, you know, we don't say, we, we think you're a bad company, go away. We say, I don't think this is a good fit for us. If you haven't spoken to Unbounded yet or 2Hop or this person or that person, in fact, the Rolodex is growing and growing and growing. That's not just, um, you know, a motherhood statement. It's a fact. Yeah. You know, we'll happily introduce people to other groups. Sure. And, and that actually brings up a fascinating point about timing. Uh, the, the theme here is it's about time. Mm -hmm. And for about 12 years now, people, uh, you know, they talk about what Bitcoin is for, where do we take it. Um, it's, it's been called a solution to a problem that we haven't identified yet. And then BSV, I think, is another step into that. Mm -hmm. 
disruptive economic uh, tool using micropayments. And, and you know, that's another step further. And then building businesses there is, is yet another step. So I'm curious, what kind of timeline are you looking at when you invest in a company? Is this a five-year thing or, hey, in a decade, this is going to be massive? Or, or how much time goes into sure. your process planning? Well, you know, we like to see business models and forecasts that we know nobody can rely on. Even public companies can't rely on their forecasts of what's going to happen next year because they just don't yeah. know. Supply chain interruptions, customer demands change, all kinds of things, right? But we try to look at a three to five year timeline and see what happens along the way and see if things are building, you know, after year one or year two, something that we make that investment. Mm -hmm. Or even if we don't, if we end up, again, not investing, but we continue to follow them, we like to follow up and see how are things going, you know, a year or two into that. Um, and, you know, to your point about um, BSV and, you know, all the, all the things you said beforehand about how complicated it all is to, to, to build a business and so on, I mean, one of the things that I like, and we saw this on display today, um, and we also see it with fixed gaming and others, that ability to do micropayments today mm -hmm. um, is maybe, um, and I'm not sure if, how many people would agree with this, but it's maybe more attractive to gaming and esports companies and easier to implement than it is for other businesses. And also because, you know, that sales cycle is so short. You know, you're dealing right. with consumers who want to bet on, or, you know, um, pay to play, mm -hmm. put an entry fee in to, to play a Dungeons & Dragons style game or play one of Haste's new games coming out and all that stuff. I think that shortens the runway pretty quickly. And I think that's one of the magic pieces of that whole Bitcoin as plumbing thing that sure. a lot of those folks have cottoned on to now. Uh, and then that's really interesting. You know, we, we talk about BSV being the blockchain for enterprise. And, mm -hmm. and there are lots of enterprise clients, but the enterprise rollout cycle is always very, very long. Always. As opposed to, as you mentioned, gaming, where mm -hmm. here's a video game, you need Bitcoin to play it, and you have a few thousand kids will scrape their way to do it very mm -hmm. rapidly. Yep. Do you try to balance your portfolio in such a way where you have some of this and some of that so that you have some things that maybe have a, a two-year roadmap and other things yeah. have a five? More so now. I think in the early days, um, what, what Calvin and the investment committee wanted to do was to seed enough investments and enough industries so that, well, so the seeds were planted for gaming, supply chain with Unisot, gaming with crypto fights, and then Coronaverse, yeah. and then Fix, and, and on and on and on. So, um, you know, the group decided a little while ago, that's kind of done. We feel like there's enough industries that we can touch now that are in our portfolio. That's great. Now we focus on other things. Um, so now we are starting to think about enterprise versus consumer and so on in a different way. Um, we're still huge, huge believers that this is the blockchain for enterprise. And mm -hmm. I heard your comments earlier about uh, about Kurt. Um, and I sort of referred to them uh, today, Mint Blue. I don't remember now if I used the name. I mean, did I or didn't I? I don't even remember. I don't it's recall. It's been a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking about how, you know, that scaling up on BSV that we talk about is already underway. Some days we beat Ethereum, some days we don't. But collectively, over the last six weeks, we have. Yeah. Um, and I think that's going to, as you might have heard David Case uh, talk about today, there are some changes underway. He didn't get into a lot of details, but there's, there's some changes underway with crypto fights that I think is going to um, take fix back or take the you know, number of transactions back in a certain direction. But what I said also was there's a more diverse number of apps and platforms and businesses making up those daily transactions. Now, some people might scoff and say, that's not true. It's all crypto fights and this and that. But yeah. a watchful eye, this is what I did say, a watchful eye will notice a new name called Mint Blue that's suddenly top five. Now, it's not a ton of transactions, but I bet you they're in beta. I yeah. bet you they haven't landed, you know, no offense, guys, I'm not giving anything away because I don't actually know anything. You know, I don't think they've landed a massive enterprise that's about to go live with 5 million transactions a day. But holy crap, they're in the top five already with something that's probably very early, and it's enterprise. On yeah. top of what Enchain and you know, Kenzai and their customers are doing and Unisot and so on and so forth. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the interesting thing. It's like investing in the Internet 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Right. You ask somebody 20 years ago, what's the Internet for? And, and you get a very different answer than you would today. And I, I think to some people now, it's if you're a gamer, Bitcoin is for gaming. But if you're in supply chain, it's a chain of custody tracking tool. Yep. What excites you, Paul? Like, what do you want to see be done and, and that would make you want to, you know, maybe call your friends up and say, hey, guys, you know, I've been working on Bitcoin for a few years. Here's the thing I did. Honestly, this is a, this is a cop out answer, but I think all of it. Because, <laughs> well, it's true, because, you know, I think I think the scaling up um, 
is, is happening maybe faster than some of us anticipated on the yeah. gaming side. Mm -hmm. And that's before we, we had heard from, you know, Built by Gamers and Haste and what they're up to today. And yeah. that's an amazing company doing, I think, soon to be doing great things with their, their customers, their, their, you know, users and so on. And yet the enterprise opportunity, there's nothing else like it in, in blockchain. There just isn't. Um, yeah. And I think more and more companies are starting to see that. They are coming over. But yeah, it's a long sales cycle. These are big companies, especially the bigger they are, right? The more their IT departments already have in their pipeline. And switching to BSV right now is not going to be the top priority unless it's already been in the works for, you know, for a year or whatever. So that stuff, I think, is still going to take time. But there's enough proofs of it, evidence of it, um, coming on live, coming on stream kind of uh, in the near future that I think it's going to change. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of being surprised about the gaming sector, I think Crypto Fights is the flagship of, of BSV right now, and, and that's an air venture uh, portfolio item. It is. So, I mean, that's that's got to feel like mm -hmm. a big victory for you guys at this point. It is, and I can't take much credit for it because when I joined the group two years ago, they'd already made the first investment. <laughs> so I was stuck with it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's been great to work with uh, Adam and David the whole way through. I think we've invested, I want to say, four or five times now um, wow. in successive rounds that sometimes got, you know, publicized in a press release and sometimes didn't. But yeah, it's, it's amazing how everything is kind of coming together from the BSV blockchain standpoint for fixed gaming, but also eSports, NFTs. Like a lot of people, you know, think crypto fights, crypto fights. They maybe don't know a lot of what they're doing is NFTs. Mm -hmm. And certainly... The world out there doesn't know that the majority of BSV transactions today are NFTs. Yeah. I think people don't know that. Or, or if it's not the majority, it's a big number. Well, it's a fascinating thing. I, I went to a meetup recently where that came up, and somebody said, well, can you even do NFTs on, on BSV? And I said, oh, we're doing about $2 million a day right now. And everyone went silent. <laughs> yeah. Other than that. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, I was like, no, really, that's, that's the truth. So where do you see NFT technology and, and other stuff going, not just with your portfolio, but in BSV mm -hmm. in general? Well, you know, we're, we're, we do have a lot of discussions with other companies uh, that are live right now and others that, that, that we've talked to. Um, there's some very interesting, I think, unique things happening in the NFT world that are gonna, that's going to surprise people. Um, yeah, there's a lot of what, what I'd call more of the same right now going on. But there's also a lot of new and interesting things you can do with NFTs, with digital collectibles, as somebody put it today. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's nothing stopping you from having a song as part of an NFT, a sure. movie as part of an NFT, a video of some kind as part of an NFT, as opposed to just a cartoon or a cool little piece of art. Yeah, absolutely. You're a music man. Every time you publish an article, it, there's, a, there's a music yes. angle in there. And I'm, I'm a... An old rock and roll guy myself. I just so. found that out. That's right. We're going to do a Bitcoin band. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm looking forward to, to making that happen if we can. And if we release something, it's going to have to be an NFT. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Paul, I, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I, I always appreciate when we bump into each other in the hallway or, or get to have these chats. Uh, anything big, any shout out you want to give to the, to the live audience before we cut out? Oh, just thank you so much for attending and watching. And uh, I just think, I, you know, it occurs to me that every time we have a coin geek, I always think, and I probably say uh, when I have a talk, that this next year is going to be the best year ever. And I think that's always been true. I don't think that's been false at all. No. But I once again think that what we're going to see over the next 12 months is going to be incredible because now it's like it's coming to roost. Yeah. It's no longer, uh, well, it was always more than theoretical, but it, w but it was at the proof stage. You know, we're going to prove to you, Marketplace, that these things are possible on BSV. Well, we're past that. I think we're going to see, I think we're on the cusp of, 5 million, 10 million transactions per day in our very near future. It's months. Coming. Months. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you. There you have it, everybody. This is how we wrap up day one of CoinGeek Conference in New York. This has been CoinGeek TV. I implore you, if you have not signed up, if you're anywhere near the New York area, you can still show up, but you need to sign up at coingeekconference.com. Make your way out, uh, or you can participate in the virtual experience, or you can watch live on YouTube. And please like, share, subscribe, all the rest of that jazz. Uh, for anybody that's unaware, I'm Kurt Wooker Jr. Broadcasting live here from lovely Times Square, where it is about time <laughs> at this CoinGeek conference. And uh, it's been a real pleasure, Paul, and uh, everyone else. So thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Craig. I'm looking forward to going back and, and watching uh, some of this stuff tonight from my, my room before I pass out, because I've been <laughs> up for far too long, as we always are at these things. Everybody, thank you so much.
Reimagine the world's financial system. One built on being simple and fair, not one that's overcomplicated, outdated, and broken, and keeps a quarter of the world's population from accessing it. Reimagine your own finances. Do you have full visibility and control of your assets and investments? We believe there's a better way, a new future for financial services. One built on equal opportunity, where possibilities are limitless, not limited, and everyone can live the life to which they aspire. At Fabric, we're weaving a better future of finance for the billions locked out and the billions locked in, a safe, open and fully transparent financial ecosystem built on innovative technology, where anyone can transform, hold, trade and grow their assets, all in one accessible place. But this journey isn't ours to take alone. Are you ready to join in? To reimagine a better future with us? Where everything is digital and anything is possible. Fabric, reimagine prosperity. Data is double-edged. Wield it well and build your place in tomorrow. But trust it blindly and risk watching your progress crumble. Because much of the data we rely upon isn't reliable at all. At Endchain, we believe in data, but we put no faith in it. Instead, we build tools that enable enterprises to trust the data upon which they rely. Endchain, data without question. Imagine, in 1997, paying for something with your watch. Remember the last time you used cash? The world has been digitised. Almost. Cash was once seen as the last bastion for reform, but now is on the decline. Digital transactions have outcompeted the hard currency since 2017 in the UK, but breakthrough bold technologies like blockchain have revolutionised more than just money. Disruptive technologies call for disruptive lawyers, ones that don't just accept the trend, but to find new ways of interpreting the law. We are currently the only global law firm with a real track record in the area of Bitcoin and blockchain. We are results driven and care only about securing the best possible result for our clients. We trace the supposedly untraceable. We pioneer the future of law. 
we deliver new solutions. We are law changers.